get a few de definitions out of the way. A, a, a network or a segment, it's all the same thing basically. That is, everything on that segment is includes the H1 interface, it includes the fuel bus power supply, all of the devices, all the, the trunk wiring, all the spur, everything. That's the entire entire package. A trunk is generally the longest piece of wire. That one pair of wire that usually goes from the H1 interface or linking device or whatever you're you're uh, using out to the field and it usually stops at uh, a device coupler. It, you can have different terms for that. In the old days it was brick, mega block, segment protector, whatever. The generic term is device coupler and there are registered device couplers now. A spur is the wire that goes from that device coupler out to a device. All right? It has some link uh, limitations on it. If you make a particular spur longer than your trunk, guess what that becomes? The trunk, right? So you have to act accordingly. Terminators, we talked about those. It's a combination of a resistor and a capacitor in series to do what? Cut down on reflections, right? Everything has to match, 100 ohms. Um, topologies, we talked about that. There's four four basic kinds and a couple of variations. Daisy chain, and we'll see what we're talking about here in just a minute. Daisy chain, tree, bus with spurs, and you can actually have point to point if you so desire. Tree is the one that we normally wind up using and it's very, very similar to the 4 to 20 world where you run an equivalent of a home run, this being the trunk, out to the field to a device coupler or junction box and then spread out from there. You also can call it chicken foot or crow's foot, just whatever you like. Okay, let's build one. You start up there with your host. You know, and it's got its own input and output boards, we'll call them H1 interface or a linking device or whatever. All right, so you can have point to point. Is that really practical in this world? No, not really, okay, but you can do it. You have daisy chain. Is there any reason why you should not do that one? You take the one out. Everything downstream. That's right. So, but there may be occasions where that's that's okay to do. You know, if you've got a loop that's all totally independent, and if something goes down, so what, right? So it's it's there. You can do it. Usually, don't. Bus with spurs. This is another variation where you um, <coughs> run a trunk out to the field and and do drops here's a device keep going here's another here's another a variation of that would be what's called trunk in trunk out you can have multiple device couplers in that same trunk just make sure that your terminator is on the very last one all right so you can have lots of variations of this bus with spurs um, and then there's the tree. That's the usual one, okay? There's another version of this, and it's a hybrid where uh, it's, a, it's basically a hybrid of bus with spurs in that uh, you can have a high power trunk or non-incentive. What's the first thing we look at when we start designing? Area, Area classification, actually. So you start with a non-incentive trunk and then you can go to a optically isolated device coupler and then have uh, intrinsically safe spurs off that. So what's the point of that? Intrinsic safety 
limits one the number of devices on there because it is a current and voltage limited, right? And then, uh, so you want to, it, it, it cuts down on the number of devices and the length, all right? So we're using on this hybrid approach, you can take a non-incentive uh, trunk, you can run that, you know, you're 1900 meters-ish, plus or minus, and you basically start over because it's optically isolated. So each one of those spurs, it's its own segment almost, all right? So you can really pick up some, some length by using this, this hybrid approach. And you can, you can do the trunk in, trunk out thing, okay? So there's all kinds of ways to, 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 to get around any length limitations that you might want to run into. Normally you don't actually run into those limitations in, in our type, in our normal type of plants. Alright, All right. so let's build something. You start with a power supply, regular power supply, but that feeds a field bus power supply. In the old days they were called power conditioners and they still are, you can get them, but as, as the technology evolved, started putting power conditioners on uh, a motherboard. So you'd have two to four of them on the same backplane. Problem was with that, that you could get noise in between. They weren't isolated. So you could propagate noise from one uh, segment to another. So then it became uh, an isolated uh, power conditioner, if you will. And we returned that as you know, field bus power supply. There are registered field bus power supplies now. Right? So you don't have that, that propagation problem. Uh, you got to have a terminator, right? You start out with a, uh, a trunk, run it out to wherever you're going, to a device coupler. And, and as we've seen, there could be several variations of this. You can do lots of things. But in general, you're going to run out to a device coupler. What are you going to have on there? A terminator, right? How many terminators are there? Two. Can it be more than that? That's a trick question. Can it be? Yeah. Do you want it to be? No. Is it going to blow up if you do have three on them? No but it's gonna affect your signal strength, all right? So, two is what you really want, okay? And then you're gonna run some spur wiring out to your devices, transmitters, valves, whatever, okay? And now you could, if I didn't, if I didn't add this last piece on here, I could still run this segment. All right, because I can put an LAS out on the segment in one of those devices, do control in the field, never have to talk to it, see it, whatever. It's like an old 43 AP. You know, you can set it and go on. What's the LAS? We'll get to LAS in just a minute. <laughs> What's the acronym? Link Active Scheduler. It's like a traffic cop. Okay. Okay. Anyway, to, to be able to talk to a host system or actually see something on the screen, you're going to have to have some sort of bridge or linking device or H1 interface. And that's usually where the LAS, the Link Active Scheduler, this traffic cop resides. And that's the one that sets up the schedule and, and keeps track of who's on that segment and which one's talking at the proper time and that sort of thing. All right. So, add this linking device and now you may have uh, uh, a high-speed Ethernet or you just may have H1 interfaces and go to your, your workstations and HMIs, okay? It's basically as simple as that. One pair of wires, many instruments. Yeah. We'll talk about how many is many. Yes, sir? Okay. Instead of a transmitter, like that fellow mm. was asking a while ago about that multiplexer. Yep. Is that one or eight? Devices? That's one. Okay. So a, uh, like an 848T is one device. It has multiple inputs, but one device. Come on. 
There are other configurations available if you need them. There is a redundant uh, trunk uh, situation here where <coughs> the, uh, the devices will have a trunk on uh, a terminator on each end of the trunk. The device coupler in the field would, would sense that, hey, uh, there's, there's two of them. I don't need to do anything about it. There's one over here, one over there. And then if something happens, say, to one of those cables, all right, then it will sense, this device coupler over here will sense, hey, something happened. No terminator. I'm going to take over. And you've got the communications is, is not interrupted, all right? It may be not for everybody or in every installation, but it's available if you need it. Think about it like the I.O., the grip, or the uh, device coupler in the field mm -hmm. is acting more like I.O. than the, than the fault tolerant Ethernet or the fault tolerant H1 link is your AV bus, which gets us back to the same reason that